Good afternoon, everyone. My name is MD Anendo. I'm the director of business. Along with me, I have introduce yourself, guys. Hi, my name is Mohammed Chowdhury. I'm the manager of communications. <laughs> Yo, what happens to the rest of the people? All right, we have Ucha Paul. My Pao. name is Joel Ramirez. I'm the manager of awards. Uh, we have MD Hossein. He's a collaborator under the lead, lead department, and we have Ucha Paul, the manager of strategy. Strategy. Okay, so this is agenda. We'll try to finish it by eight, but no promises. Um, yeah, you can. If you have any questions, please put hashtag question or at question one of those two, so we know that you're asking a question. So we're gonna begin talking about who the Full Metal Beavers are. So the Full Metal Beavers are, is the FRC team number for the Full Metal Beavers are 6636. Um, we were first started in 2015, and the core values that we, we are, like we do is equity, opportunity, and unity. And if you wanna learn more about us, go to fullmetalbeavers.com, and please support us at patreon.com slash fullmetalbeavers. Okay, let's now talk about first. What is FIRST? FIRST stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. It was founded by Dean Kamen, and it has four programs that it hosts every year. FIRST LEGO League Junior, FIRST LEGO League, FIRST Tech Challenge, and FIRST Robotics Competition, or FRC, which we'll be, we will talk about right now. In FRC, high school students and their mentors are tasked with designing and building a robot that competes in high energy environments. Each January, an event known as Kickoff reveals that year's unique and challenging game. This year's Kickoff revealed 2020's game, Infinite Recharge. Each team had received a Kickoff kit and the game manual was released this January 4th. While you may think the most important goal of FRC is to win, it is actually displaying uh, gracious professionalism and cooperation. What is gracious professionalism? GP for short was a term coined by the late great Woody Flowers. May he rest in peace. It uh, it has no concrete definition, which is done purposely. It it's uh the it has uh, the general consensus is that it encourages high quality work, emphasizing the values of others and respecting individuals and the community. But other possible definitions include gracious attitudes and behaviors are win win. Gracious professionals make an, make a valued contribution in a peaceful and pleasing manner. In first, this means that we should be strong competitors while also treating others with respect and kindness. Avoid leaving anyone feeling as if they are excluded or unappreciated. With gracious professionalism, everyone wins. Cooperation. What is cooperation? It is displaying unqualified kindness and respect in the face of fierce competition. It comes from the philosophy that teams can and should help and cooperate with one another even as they compete. It involves learning from teammates and mentors and competing and assisting when you can. Quoting a former Woody Flowers Award recipient, winning is important. This is a competition. However, winning the right way and being proud of what you have accomplished and how you have accomplished it is more important. Now that we have a basic understanding of FIRST and its values of gracious professionalism and cooperation, let's move on to the 2020 Infinite Recharge game and its manual. Welcome to the 2020 FIRST Robotics Competition and this year's game, Infinite Recharge! An incoming asteroid shower is aimed at First City! Using Alliance droids, planetary citizens collect and score power cells while traversing the trench run and boundaries to ensure maximum protection with an operational shield generator. Droids start on an initiation line and may be preloaded with up to three power cells. Droids operate autonomously during the first 15 seconds an attempt to score power cells into any of their three available power ports. While every power cell deposited adds equal charge to the shield generator, higher power ports earn more points. 
Drivers then control their droids for 2 minutes and 15 seconds of teleoperated time. Power cells are collected from one of the five chutes in the loading bay, and then driven across the city to be scored in the low, outer, and inner ports. Droids must score the required number of power cells to activate sections of their shield generator, and then either rotate their control panel a specified number of times, or position it to a specific color. Near the end of the match, droids race to their rendezvous point to make their shield generator operational. Alliances are awarded bonus points for a level generator switch. The alliance that earns the most points wins the match. May the Force be with us all. Okay, Uchipal. Okay, so about the game. Um, okay, so section three, arena. The field for infinite recharge is 26 feet, containing the following features display on the image. The red and blue power port are located in the alliance walls, while the loading bays are located in the perspective alliance wall. Great, um, guardrails and alliance walls prevent robots from exiting the match while four gates are located around the corner for exit. Next slide. Section 3.2. Generator switch. Each uh, shield generator has one generator switch, which has a handle. The handle consists of a rung and supporting structure below the horizontal beam of the generator switch. At the start of the match, the rug is parallel over the project, um, prote protection carpet. The generator switch can tilt and rest in different positions depending on the robots on the handle. The generator switch is level if the rung is, hu is hung within 8 degrees of horizontal. Hard stops prevent the generator switch from rotating more than 14.5 degrees in either direction. The rotating, uh, rotating portion of the generator switch is weighted approximately 93 pounds. Alliance color stack alliance colored stack um, lights on the shield generator display information about the status of the generator switch. Next slide, section 3.4.1.3. Around the outer port, LED lights are used to indicate the progress towards capacity. The lights begin symmetrically from the top and proceeding out. When the light state is off outside of the match, field is match ready in match. Current stage not activated. When light stage is green, head referee has determined field safe for humans. Alliance call case pattern. Stage has reached captivity um, capacity but not activated. Entire light string is alliance color. All stages activated. Now let's talk about match play. Setup. Power cell setup. There are 48 power cell stage potential. Five on each of the two trench runs five on the boundaries inside each alliance's rendezvous point, five on the racks of each alliance's loading bay. And each, each of the three teams per alliance may preload up to three power cells in their robot. Robot setup. Each team must stage its robot such that its bumper intersect the initiation line. If order placement matters to any alliances, they should notify the head referee who will then place the robots in alternate positions. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Human setup. A, a drive team can have a maximum of five members that consists of drivers, coaches, human players, and technicians. Drivers, coaches, and human players are staged behind the starting line inside their alliance station. Technicians, however, have a designated area near the field. Next slide. There are two phases in every match. Autonomous period, which is the first 15 seconds where Robots operate without any drive team control or input. They attempt to score power cells into power ports, retrieve additional power cells, and exit the Alliance's initiation line before autonomous period ends. An important thing to note about the autonomous period is that no defense can be played. Teleoperated period, which is the second and last phase. It consists of the remaining two minutes and 15 seconds. 
Drivers remotely operate the robot to score power cells and goals and manipulate control panels to activate different stages of the shield generator. The final 30 seconds of the teleoperated period is called endgame. In endgame, robots attempt to energize the shield generator. Next slide. MD. All right, so I'm not going to play a video on how to score. Please look out for the bottom port, the outer port, and the inner port. Hi, I'm Ted. And I'm Kelly. We're here to talk about the power ports. The power port is where the power cells are scored to charge the shield generator. An alliance's power port is located between player stations 1 and 2 in the opponent's alliance station. There are three ports on each face, the bottom port, the outer port, and the inner port. The inner port is located within the outer port. Unsuccessful inner port shots will still score by staying in the outer port, but shots that bounce out are not scored. Notice that the bottom port is slightly lower than the three upper openings of the loading bay. Power cells count towards the overall score, as well as charging the shield generator. Each port has a different point value, but all scored power cells count equally towards a shield generator charge. However, the generator stops accumulating charge once that stage reaches capacity. The lights around the top of the power port indicate how close alliances are to the capacity of the current stage. Lights start at the top of the port and fill down the sides. Once the current stage is at full capacity, yellow lights will chase through the light string, indicating that alliances need to access the control panel to activate that stage. When that stage of the shield generator is activated, the lights go off and the fill pattern starts again. Be sure to watch the Trench Run and Control Panel video with Chuck and Amanda for full details about activating a stage of the shield generator. The power port features a vision target for robots to use. The vision target is made of retroreflective tape and frames the bottom of the outer port. Once power cells are scored, they will be available for the opposing alliance in the corral. Check out the Loading Bay video with Malcolm and Fiona to learn more about how and when the power cells need to be re-entered into the field. Good luck, teams! And, and may, may the, the force, force be with, with us all! all. Okay, so as you can see from the video, there are different ways to score. These are some of them. Power port, shield generator, control panel, and generator switch. If you go to section 4.4, .4, you can know you can see each ex like what they are. So the points. These are the different point values. Uh, as you can see, bottom port in the autonomous period is 2. Outer port is 4. Inner port is 6. And the teleop is 1 for the bottom port, two for the outer port, and three for the inner port. Um, MD Hossein, can you talk about your little trick? So in order to remember the values more easily for the autonomous and the teleop, um, for the autonomous, just remember two, four, and six. And for teleop, just remember one, two, and three, going from the bottom port to the inner port as the numbers increase. Um, another thing to look out for this in the point value is how much points are scored when you hang. Uh, you scored 25 points in the teleop when you hang, and you score 5 points when you park at the end of the game. Um, there's, uh, You can get 4 ranking points at the end of the game per qualification match. Uh, you can see as the shield generator energized, uh, tie and win, and the shield generator op operational. So we're now talking about the violations. You can get a penalty of foul, technical foul, yellow card, red card, disabled and disqualified. You can pause the video and read the descriptions for each. And these are the other violations and their expanded interpretations. Once again, these are the drive team positions. There can only be five members in the drive team. These include coach, driver, human player, and technicians. We're now going to take a five minute break for you guys to access questions.
Um, Missouri Chowdhury asked a question. What can drivers do to get violations? Uh, that can be very broadly interpreted. There are a number of things drivers can do to get violations, but um, some of the things that a drive team can do is if the driver coach were to switch with the driver, that's a violation. If the driver were to drive during the autonomous period, that's a violation. If the driver were to consult with te with the technician, that's a violation during the match. And then if the driver were to, like, I guess just commit normal fouls that will be further explained later in our other sections um, during the match, then that can also be seen as a violation. But we'll get more into detail with that as we read through sections 6 and 7 and then 8. Shauna Ali asked, um, there was the power port shield generator control panel, and what else? The last one is the generator switch. Giovanni Davis has a question. What do you need to pass the test tomorrow? That question doesn't really pertain to what we're talking about during this stream, so I cannot give you an answer. Oshmita Shashi asks, can the video links be put up on Discord after this? And yes. Mazur Chaudhary asked, how many power cells can you hold at max? So when the robot is active, you may hold up to five. Abby asks, so how how you score again? Someone answer that. If you want to figure out how to score again, then you can go back in the video and um, watch the previous videos that we played because there are multiple ways to score that we get in depth with. And also to build off a of Missouri Chowdhury's question, you can hold up to a max of five, and during the autonomous period, you can only start out with three. Shauna Ali asked a question, will there be any bonus questions? Yes, there will. Sandesh Henry asked a question, how many power cells can a robot carry? Like I said earlier, at max five, at the start of the autonomous period, After he asked, what is the generator switch again? Someone answered that. Generator switch is uh, while, while you have 30 seconds uh, left of the match and you have to have your robot in the middle and you have to uh, climb off to the handle and you have to eat, you could get um, points based on how you um, balance your robot compared to how other robots are placed. Giovanni Davis asked a question, what happens if the mentor begins to drive the robot? The mentor cannot be in the drive team, so that is a clear violation. Yes, your robot will most likely be disabled. After he, after he acts, so the first 15 seconds, you can hold three power cells, and the tele period, you can hold five power cells, question mark. Mazur Chowdhury asks, how long is the teleoperated period? The teleoperated period is two minutes and 15 seconds. And after his question is, um, for the first 15 seconds, you can hold a max of three power cells. Th that's correct, right, guys? And yeah. um, yes. that's, not, that's not completely necessary, though. Uh, you can only start out with three, three power cells. Three, yes. But you can hold up to a max of five. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with the period. It doesn't have to be with. It doesn't have to do anything with the the teleop or the autonomous. I mean, during the autonomous, it's up to three, as we were saying. Okay, we'll start it again at three seven twenty five. What song should I play? Someone someone put it on the live chat. Sanjita asked again, how long is the teleop period? 
two minutes and 15 seconds. How long is the match in total? Two minutes and, two minutes and 30, 30, seconds. Minutes and 30 seconds. Including autonomous and telegram. Could you repeat that, Mohammed? I think you'll cut off it. The match can last two minutes and 30 seconds. 15 seconds for autonomous and two minutes and 15 seconds for telegram. Thanks. Uh, someone asked, what are the some ways to get a foul, yellow card, and red card? Um, if you want to know more about that, you should read the game manual on page, one second. Section 7, 8, and 9. And also section 4.5 and section 4.51. Tune in until we explain the rest of the section to figure out how to get more fouls, yellow cards, and red cards. Keep asking questions. Big Daddy Boy asks, what team is this? Um, this is Team 6636. Mazor asked, how many power cells are there in total in each match? 48. There can be potentially up to 48, depending on how many, if any, teams preload their uh, robot with power cells. Mazur asked, wait, I thought it was 65. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Is it supposed to be 45, uh, 65 power cells in a match? No, it's so, actually 48. It's 48. It's 48, Mazur. Um, someone asked, can we use our notes for the test tomorrow? No, you may not use your notes during the test. Uh, Abby asked, where should I look into the manual for fouls? Um, you should look at section 4, spe uh, especially on page 36 or 37. Um, the bearded Bismarck asks, what is your climber design? Wait, wait. Um, Joel, you want to answer that? So, for our climber design and cab model, we haven't completely finalized our robot, but we're going to begin to build it during this break. We've almost had it completely completed, but we don't have, like, an exact climber design. We did have an idea of something like a like arm going up to grab onto the generator switch and then it would just like pull the robot up just a little bit and then it would that would be like how it would hang we're not planning to just bring our robot like all the way up that was just one design plan but we have a few more that we're looking into and it'll be finalized soon uh okay we're gonna take the last two questions um how big is the power cell we're gonna answer that in the next few slides, right? Guys, how big is the parasol? How big? Yeah. The diameter. Do you mean the diameter? The diameter. I think they're talking about the diameter. The diameter of the ball is seven inches. Uh, they're going to go over the... 
Abby asked how tall is the robot and what is the weight? The max weight is 125 pounds and the top, um, how tall the robot is 45 inches. So the specifics, um, these will once again be gone over in section nine, I believe. Okay, everyone wants to start again. Let's try to go a little slow now. Okay, begin. Section six, conduct rules. Okay, section six, conduct rules. So one of the most important things that FRC emphasizes on is sportsmanship. So one of the things actually referenced in their manual is asking teams to throw a match is not cool. And it's pretty obvious why they would say that. It's not really nice to be putting other people down when that's not what first is about and it's not what like their mission statement is about and not the kind of kids that we're trying to raise here. So we should not be trying to get our team to forfeit a match or throw a match and we should not coerce them into throwing a match for any strategic advantage. Entering a match, you always want to be entering a match safely, respectfully, and don't miss any of your matches. If you had passed an inspection and completely went through it and you passed it, it's cleared, and you did not go into your next qualification match, then you are liable for getting a red card. Matches and aftermath. One person to consult referees after matches only, and they have to be from the drive team. They have to be in high school, pre-college. One player station only. Stay within your player station. Don't enter other people's. And harming other teams will not get you anything in a game. If you try to harm another team in any way, such as like damaging their robot, you're just going to receive a foul and drag yourselves down. So don't think that trying to harm another team in any way will work for a strategic advantage. Next slide. Section 7. Game rules, robots. Next. The autonomous and power cell. Defense during the autonomous period. So during the first 15 seconds of the match, which is the autonomous period, you are not allowed to play defense. The autonomous period, um, what autonomous really means is almost automatically, basically. So you don't want to be trying to drive your robot during the autonomous period. That's a violation. Autonomous period just means that the robot should be able to move on its own during those first 15 seconds. So no one from the drive team can touch the operator console or try to drive the robot during that time period. It's a violation. The max power cells a robot can hold is five. Power cells should be inbounds and used as directed. So you are not allowed to intentionally eject power cells from the arena or use them in a way that will help you gain strategic advantage, such as maybe shooting another robot with a power cell for some sort of reason. You can't do those kinds of things. They should be used the way they were intended to be. Next slide. So zone robot restrictions, zone dash robot restrictions. So some zone restrictions are that you should not be within like the bumper zone of another robot when they're in um their target zone or scoring field. You need to basically give them some space. Don't be trying to block them from being able to move around or anything like that. One of the robot restrictions also is a five second pin count. So you can pin down robots to try to stop them from moving, but only up to five seconds before you receive a violation. You cannot do sector to sector shots. That's what's known as a full core shot. And you can see in the image all the way at the bottom left, what one sector looks like. And then all the way to the left, there's another sector. You can't shoot from one sector to the other. That's a violation. You cannot be within the bumper zone of another team when they're in their scoring zones and um your bumper zones if they are like if your bumpers are kind of falling off or they're loose or they're not completely in the zone that they're supposed to be then you're going to receive a foul and if it's intended for some restricted like or strategic advantage i mean then you're going to get a red card give opponents some space leave their control panel alone so 
in this little image right under the bullet points. Give opponent some space. An opponent robot may not contact a robot whose bumpers are intersecting in its target zone or loading zone, regardless of who initiates contact. So either team will receive a tech foul, for instance, of when this happens. So you cannot be within the target zone or loading zone in a robot's bumper zone. Next slide. Section 8, Game Rules. Before the match. Section 8.1, before the match. Position. Human players, drivers, and coaches in their alliance. So, everyone in the drive team of your team should be within the player station and in the correct like spot. So, the drive coach should be behind the drivers, giving them advice on what to do. The driver should be driving the robot. The human players should be ready to put in power cells into the field, which they can only do through their respective areas. You cannot throw in a power cell from anywhere in the field. And technicians should be in the designated area outside the Alliance station. Power cells. Leave the power cells alone prior to the start of the match. Drive teams may not rearrange the power cells within the Alliance station or the stage on the field. So do not modify the power cells. That is an instant red card in violation. Don't modify any equipment that is part of the game field. Don't do anything that is already going to put your team at risk. Next slide. Next slide. And now I will hand this slide over to MD Hossein. So section 8.1.1 during the match. So during the match, in terms of control, well, a robot shall be operated only by the driver and or human players of that team. So if uh, anyone else decides to control the robot, for example, the coach, the robot will be disabled. So make sure not to do that. Um, in terms of the power cell, power cells may only be introduced to the field during teleop by a driver or a human player and through the loading bay. So make sure to follow these protocols. And if you fail to do so, there will be a foul per power cell introduced into the game field. Next slide. Um, in terms of the power cell, once again, during teleop, an alliance may not have more than 15 power cells in their alliance station. And for each power cell, there will be a foul. Moreover, power cells must be stored on the loading bay racks. And those racks are found right on the alliance station, obviously. And otherwise, that would be a foul as well. Next slide. So next, we'll be talking about the arena section 8.3 so next slide oh, apologies I believe it was section 8.2 um so section 8.2 in the arena so in the arena don't bang on the glass team members may never strike or hit the player station plastic windows um the violation for that would be at first a verbal warning so someone would warn you and if you do once again then that would be a yellow card so please don't make this foolish mistake. It's just uh, very foolish. Uh, and so we're going to have a small break right now. OK, you guys can now ask your questions once again. We know that was long. Joel, they couldn't really hear you, so apparently. If you couldn't properly hear me, you can ask any questions of something that might have been unclear to you, and then I will answer it. Yeah, so he talked about um, before the match, anything before the match, during the match, and in the area. You, Arena, you could ask any questions about that. Uh, MDH wants to know how many questions will be on the test. Around 70, right? Whoa, no. Oh, oh. 44. Oh, 45. 44. My baddie. Um, what do you mean by modifying the power cells? 
MD Hussein. Modif modifying the power cells as if, like, if you put something in the power cell, like maybe a metal ball to help you shoot it or something like that. So if you change anything about the power cell, it can literally be something as small as, like, marking it up. You can't do that either. Uh, someone asked, um, can we go back to the slide with the arena? Uh, this is a slide with the arena. Uh, Abigail asked, what can you bring in the match? Who had that slide? Hello, guys. So things that you can bring into a match would be any sort of like safety equipment. You can bring your operator console and then you can bring like recording equipment, but specifically only for the match. MDH asks, well, if someone is caught cheating, what will be the what will the consequences be? Cheating on the test or during the competition? So if it's <clears throat> directed towards cheating in the test, um, you'll see when it happens. If you cheat on the test, um, you're most likely going to get kicked off the team. But if you cheat in the competition, there will be a lot of um, violations. Uh, after he, which fl first slide do you mean? Um, yeah. MD Zaman asks, um, can you please restate all the things you can bring? Never mind. We'll track that. All the things that you can bring into a match are the operator console, safety equipment, and then recording equipment, but only for the match. G10 and G11 stuff. Um, she, she said go back to the slide with the G10 and G11 stuff. Do you mean section 7? You want to go back to section 7? Can we... I'm going back to section 7. It's slide 21, I think, that he wants to go back to. That's the only one that had a G11 in it. I am. Oh, I see. I see who it is right here. G10 and G11. What are the violations? If you can explain one more time, Joel. If you want me to really quickly go over this slide again. Zone yeah. Restrictions. Zone restrictions do not like go into the robot's, I guess, target zone or loading zone, regardless of who initiates contact. You can actually read G11 right there. Give opponent some space. An opponent may not contact a robot whose bumpers are interacting with the targets on the loading zone. Regardless who 
initiates contact, you're both going to receive a tech foul, so don't do that. And it shows some diagrams to the left, right, like to the top left corner, that first image. That's what it looks like. The bottom left image, no sector to sector shots, which is what's a full course shot. You can see the red sector. And then all the way on the left, the same parallel section is the blue sector. Do not shoot from sector to sector. That's a violation. You cannot extend more than 12 inches outside the robot's frame perimeter. That's a violation. And then you cannot extend more than 45 inches in height for the robot. That's also a violation if you go farther than that. There's a five second pin count of robots. You cannot pin a robot, which means to make it stop moving for more than five seconds. That's a violation. And then that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's just bumper zones are really important. If your bumpers are like loose or maybe falling off a little bit, and this is for like a strategic advantage, then you're going to get a red card. If not, you're going to get a foul. So your bumpers have to be in place in their bumper zone next to the robot. I hope that answered your question. Uh, someone asks, are we going over all the information that will be on the test? Um, yes. And we'll... So you should still study. Yeah, you should still study, so but at the end... Yeah, don't depend on this at all. But um, we'll go at the end. We'll have like a five-minute break. We'll meet ourselves and make sure we went over everything. MDH asks, do we need to pass... Uh, out of 44, what do we need to pass with? And how much is each question worth? So, it's going to be probably out of 45. I think I'm going to add a question. But you need to at least have 40 points. Well, 40 questions correct to pass. But it's not going to be out of 45 points because some questions will be worth a little more. Each question is worth one point, And then each multiple selection question is worth one point per correct answer. I think we're ready to continue. You guys ready? MD Hussein. All right, let's go. Okay, so the next section, we'll be discussing section nine, robot construction rules. So the first thing we'll be going over is an overview of parts. Next slide. So section 9.1, overview. So one crucial thing that we have to know is the definition of a component and a mechanism and what separates each one of them. So a component is any part in its most basic configuration and cannot be disassembled without damaging and or altering its function. So a component may include a basic motor or maybe a pneumatics piston. If you damage it in any way, um, you may not be able to use it in uh, with its intended function. A mechanism is a COTS or that stands for commercially off the shelf. And it's a custom assembly of components, meaning that it can be disassembled into individual components without damaging the entire part. And that may um, include, a mechanism may include a combination of motors, pistons, etc. cetera. Uh, next slide. So um, mechanisms and um, components are available from vendors. A vendor is a legitimate so business source for COTS items. Um, COTS items are widely available for all teams to purchase from a vendor. So that means that if the item is widely available, then no one team will have the exclusive advantage of a certain item, and that's to just ensure like fair play. Um, to be a COTS item, the component or mechanism must be unaltered. So that's just like a side detail to qualify for what a COTS item is. Um, if the COTS item isn't available, but there is an item with a function equal to the original, then it can be used. So if, if for some reason during the competition, your um, item or your part, it just malfunctions uh, for some reason, and the one that you originally had is not is no longer available, then you may replace it with one that has basically the same usage or function. Um, a fabricated item is any component or mechanism that has been altered, built, or constructed. So for example, if you have a COTS item and I don't know, you decide to drill holes into it 
then it is no longer a cuts item. It became a fabricated item. Next slide. So next we'll be going over the general robot design. Next slide. Okay, so, so these are like very important rules for uh, the build team and just to know in general. So a robot starting configuration may not have frame perimeter greater than 120 inches. So as you can see on the image on the right, if you add up all those sides of that rectangle, that should not be more than 120 inches. Um, next, robot may not be more than 45 inches tall. So that's just the height constraint that first employs. So make sure you don't build a robot higher than that in its starting configuration, of course. Um, the robot's weight must not exceed 125 pounds. So make sure when you weigh your robot, it doesn't go above that or during inspection, you're going to have problems. And that doesn't include, so during the inspection, that would include batteries or bumpers. So don't put that into account when you're measuring the weight. Moreover, the robot may not extend more than 12 inches beyond their frame perimeter. So um, on the image on the right, if you can see that, um, the arrows indicate uh, 12 inches beyond the frame perimeter. So from each of the sides, um, you may not go 12 inches beyond that with your, for example, mechanisms and your arms and whatnot. Okay, next slide. Um, next, we'll be discussing the bumper rules. So next slide. So the bumper rules. So the bumpers are an essential component of the robot, of course, because they're going to protect your robot from all the collisions and intense gameplay that's going on. So robots are required to use bumpers to protect all outside corners of the frame perimeter. So each corner will have to have uh, some sort of bumper configuration at least. So for adequate protection, at least six inches of the bumper must be placed on each side of each outside corner. So what that looks like is on the image on the right, you can see on each corner on both sides, you have to go at least six inches for each of the sides. And the image also tells you what's not okay if it does not go um, at least for six inches. Next slide. Okay, next we'll be reviewing very quickly pneumatics. Uh, next slide. So if you don't know what pneumatics are, so pneumatics consist of um, any air systems on the robot, uh, whatever it may be, whether you're using pistons or something else that uh, in involves using the air. So 9.6 pneumatics, working air pressure on the robot must be no greater than 60 PSI. So what does that mean, working pressure? So working pressure is when your robot is, for example, actuating uh, some sort of piston and making a move. So when that is being done, uh, when you open like the valve to put the air into the piston, <clears throat> the pressure might not exceed, must not exceed 60 PSI. Um, stored air pressure on the robot must be no greater than 120 PSI. And what that means is in the closed system that you have, uh, the pressure within that system, it can be greater than uh, 120 PSI. And of course you have the readings um, on your devices, I mean, um, parts. Um, next, teams are required to check and or adjust the relief valve to release air at 125 PSI. So if we go on to the next slide, um, this is like a, let's consider this as a closed system. And what the pressure relief valve is, is it's that thing at the top connected to the compressor. So when your system air, uh, air pressure really is going beyond 125 PSI, it would automatically release air because going beyond that would be dangerous and any part that uh, possibly like comes out from your system could cause harm. And so we've reviewed um, section nine. And so I'd just like to thank you for your time, for joining us here. And please do make sure- Wait, to yeah, um, this live stream's not over. We're gonna take a five minute break to go over, go, look through all the questions and the um, actual test to make sure we answered everything. So just wait for five minutes. Yeah, that. Yeah, and don't leave yet because there's a special thing coming. Chance. This is your chance to ask questions, by the way.
Okay, and we're back. Everyone, ask so, your questions. So, Mazur Chowdhury asked, what happens if the drive coach drives the robot? So, we said it earlier, but um, your robot gets disabled. Okay, so we're going to give you some extra credit points right now. So, just, just remember these terms. Curry. NASA. Someone go. Yo, where's your key terms? Ucha, go. Cheese. Say something, Hossein. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? No, I didn't hear you. Oh, I said universe. Joel, you gotta say something. Animals. Okay. Okay, now for the rest of the questions, Absihi Safin asked, can you go over the pneumatics again, MD? Oh, the pneumatics? Okay. So, um, what specific thing do you want me to go over? So, basically, the important thing that's to remember are, so the stored pressure would be 120 PSI, and the working pressure would be um, 60 PSI, and the pressure valve would need to release the air um, when the system is beyond 125 PSI? I hope that answers your question. Charles Maduka asked, are these slides available on the Google Drive? If not, can you please make them available? Oh, uh, oh, oh, after this, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the thing. Video. Maisha Islam asked, what are all the ways you can earn points during the game? What was the question again? Sorry. What are all the ways you can earn points during the game? You could, so, um, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. No, you can go. Okay, so, um, the different ways to score point is through power port, shield generator, control panel, and generator switch. If you want to know the specifics, um, there is a section on the game manual. Section four. Uh, four point. Yeah, four section four point five. Four point four point five. Abby Gabby asked, what was the most frequent question the team got wrong on the test? If so, what is the correct answer? Um, what is Grace's professionalism? Oh, wait, no. What is GP? It's Gracious professionalism. Gracious professionalism. Yeah, that's one of the and, and also, um, what the team values are. It's equity, opportunity, and unity. Don't forget that, or it's over for you. Um, I was just wondering, what's the shield generator, um, shield generator energized thing again? Can someone talk about that? And the rotators? Someone answer. So I'll just talk about the second thing you mentioned. So the, for the control switch, I believe it's called. Um, in order to achieve position control, uh, what you need is to rotate the control switch to a specific color and you're supposed to hold it there for at least five seconds um, in order to achieve rotation control what you would need to do is rotate the um, control switch for at least three times and no more than five times i just want to add on to what md said if it is rotated more than five times, then the count resets to zero. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, is there any more questions? What are all the parts of the game? What, is it, what, what, what does that mean? Can you be a little more specific what you mean by parts? Yeah.
someone asked, um, and Missouri, Missouri Chowdhury asked, how do you get a yellow, yellow card again? Um, does anyone know where that is in the game manual? Some ways that someone can get a yellow card? Is that 4.5? Okay. There are a number of ways to get a yellow card. If you want to find out how, then you would have to check section 6, 7, 8, and 9. They go into detail, and a lot of them just speak on, like, violations and which ones can give you yellow cards. So you'll just have to read that over. How can you earn a red card? Uh, same thing for the red card. It's going to be in those same sections. If you want, you can review the video. Me and MD Hossein both actually went over some ways to get a yellow and red card while we were speaking. Yeah, and those are most likely going to be the answers to the test. But just make sure you actually read the other ones because we're not sure what actually the test looks like exact. Okay, MD. Finish up. Abby Gabby asks, what happens if we don't pass the test? You'll find out if that happens. Okay, guys. Um, I think our time here is done. Please go to our website to learn more about the Full Metal Beavers. Oh, someone just asked a quick question. Two yellow card equal red, right? Question mark. Um, I don't think so. Um, if you want to know more about that, you should go to 4.5. And also 6, 7, and 8. But that's, the, that's all the question we have. I mean, all the questions we can answer for now. Thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow in the game manual test. And Good luck. yeah, and please rewatch this video because all the questions are answered. And yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Good luck.